guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today we're going to be putting together a fun light up card using the glamorous birthday. Yeah, I love this um, stamp set. It's from Crafty Meraki. I don't have a lot of her stuff, but I do have a few and they just work so well together. So I'm going to be using this plus um, one or two of her stencils and we're going to turn that into a fun light up card using the Pear Blossom Press One Light. So this is going to be super fun. Now, most of the time, I don't have a plan in mind when I start creating, but I have done one card with this um, stamp set and some stencils that I absolutely love, and I have another idea for some. So first, I'm going to start off with using one of the arched etch dies from Spellbinders to cut a window out. So I'm kind of going to have a little scene back behind this. So I'm cutting that out. Um, first off, I did trim down the panels because I do want to have a border around it and that sort of thing. And I've got a little bit of a plan already done. So I've trimmed this one down to be four. Um, I think it was three and three quarters by... Yes, it's three and three quarters by five. And I've got a second panel that is the exact same size. So I'm going to be using both of those together. And I want to add my little scene behind this basically behind this window. So I've already cut that one out. And next I'm going to layer those up and take a pencil just to draw on the background one where I want my window to be so that I know that I've got my scene where I want it. So now I've got a general idea of where I can start the rest of my work. So before I start doing any kind of ink blending in the back, because I am going to do that, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stamp out my background, my background scene. I want my sun and clouds. And then I'm going to also stamp out a couple of masks. So for this, I'm just going to use some VersaFine Clear Ink. And then we're going to heat emboss it because yeah, I love doing the heat embossing. I've also already stamped and um, embossed out the little llamas that I'm gonna choose from. So those are gonna be super cute and kind of want everything to match a little bit. Okay, so for the embossing, I'm using Wow Clear Embossing Powder, which means that it has anti-static properties and makes it great for when I inevitably forget to use my anti-static powder tool. So let's go ahead and heat this up. So next I'm going to re-stamp them onto some post-it tape so I can fussy cut that out and that tape can act as a mask. Doesn't really matter what color you use because nobody's gonna see it. You just need to have enough color down so that you can fussy cut it out. Okay, and now I want to add one of the little mountains to go back there too. So there is a mountain in this set. But I wanted the, I wanted, I kind of wanted my um, clouds to be in front of it. So that's one reason why I needed to do some of the masking. masking. I'm also going to mask this off because when I'm doing the background, I don't want, yeah, I don't want there to be any issues. Anywho, let's go ahead and put this back in place. And I'll put this mountain right about here. So I'm gonna start over here and then I can move my way across because I am gonna do a little bit of layering. Yep, okay. This is the one in the front, so I'll put that one there. And again, we're gonna stamp this in our VersaFine Claire Nocturne and Heat Emboss. And then I'm gonna stamp another mask. I'm gonna do the same thing and kind of fill up a little bit of the area um, for my background before I do some ink blending. Now that we've got the masks done, I'm gonna do some ink blending and some stenciling on that background.
next I'm going to add a little color to our mountains using a couple of different green markers from my Spectrum Noir. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just start adding a little bit of color down. Okay, I, th I think that's going to do it for the background. Let's go ahead and remove the last of the mask. I probably need to color up that sun, but let's take a look and see what it looks like first. Oh yeah, love those white fluffy clouds. That's perfect. Okay, so I do need to do a little bit of coloring around that sun, but you know what I think I'm going to do instead? I think I'm going to color it, but then also die cut a circle there and maybe do some vellum and then do the light behind it. We'll see how that looks. Okay, I just changed my mind. After getting all the coloring done and I colored up and cut out this cute little llama, I decided as always, to test it to see what it's going to look like with the light behind it. So I did color up the little sun, and when I put the light behind it, I think it's pretty much perfect. So I'm not going to actually cut the hole like I was initially intending. What I do need to do, though, at this point is line this all up, make sure everything is right where I want it so that I can put my button to tell them where to push, right? So I'm going to grab a piece of best ever craft tape to tape my panels together so that they don't move and then I can put this behind and I'm going to use a pencil so I can kind of just draw where I think it's going to go and of course pressing the button to test it so I want my son to be right about there and the button is right here so I'll put a little dot right where the button is supposed to be that's where I'm going to put that. And while I'm at it, since I have this in place, I'm going to go ahead and just draw where my mechanism is going to go and then just double check and make sure that it didn't move. Okay, so that looks perfect. Pencil is your friend. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp on this top piece just on the top piece. I'm going to stamp my press here and we're going to go ahead and start putting everything together. I want a little extra dimension. Don't really need it, but that's kind of what I want to do with this. I'm going to add a little bit of thin foam tape. This is about an eighth of an inch, so it doesn't add a lot of dimension. But I'm going to add some of that to the back of this frame piece. Since these two panels are the same size, they should be fairly easy to line up, which is one reason why I'm putting this on first instead of doing the background. There we go. So now that panel is ready to go on the front of a card. So you could just go straight from this and pop our little, I'm going to pop. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pop him up too because he's just too darn cute. Let's not wait. I'll add a little bit of foam behind our little llama There he goes. I think he is just stinking adorable. And now we're going to work on this piece. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use some double-sided adhesive. So I've just got some double stick tape I'm going to put onto the battery pack.
Okay, and we need to have the <clears throat> the button behind where it has the press here and the light behind our sun. It should fit right in that spot where I just taped. I just um, did the pencil, so let's just double check. And that is perfect. Love that. Okay, press it in place real well. Now we need to just put some foam tape on the back. And for that part, we're going to be using the world's greatest foam tape. And I'm almost done with this roll. That looks perfect. Okay, I'm going to put one more strip down the center so that everything is going to be basically level. And then we can start adhering everything down to the card base. Now I cut a green panel to go along with the green. Put cut a green panel down to just smaller than A2. So this one is four by five and a quarter, whereas these are three and three quarters by five. So I've got a quarter inch difference between them all, which makes an eighth of an inch difference each way. So this matting layer is going to be an eighth of an inch small, a eighth of an inch all the way around our, our llama panel. Let's go ahead and adhere all of this down. And in case you haven't heard about the world's greatest foam tape. One of the features is that the release paper comes off super easy. It is that double thickness that is perfect for this type of car. But the best thing is it is repositionable. So if you put it down wrong, you can pick it back up and move it around without worrying about ripping your card. Okay, that's a little bit off. Yeah, this comes up a lot easier than my Scotch foam does. And now all I need is a sentiment. So I picked one of the sentiments out of the set. This one says, have a galamarous birthday. And I'm gonna put just put it across the bottom here. It's actually pretty much the exact size width-wise as our card. Put that down right there. And I'm gonna line it up with the bottom. So it's actually going to take a little bit away from that window, but that's fine. It's gonna still look pretty much perfect. And there we go. I love how this little guy turned out. Let's try it one more time. Take a look at the light. Yay, with a nice bright sun, love this card. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check out all the other videos that I've got up using some of the Pear Brought Blossom Press lights. And yeah, I will be having a light up card mini course coming up soon. So keep an eye out for that. You guys have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye guys.